You're both on the Armed Services Committee. Uh, and I want to ask two questions before I, I open it up to questions from you all. Um, and it's, it, it, these, these are the two questions. First of all, um, is there a role for NATO right now in this crisis that is beyond what we've seen so far? And secondly, um, have we learned something in the last few weeks or months about Russia that ought to change the arc of defense spending that everybody had been uh, working on previously? Well, I'll start with you. Well, let me start with the second question first, which, which is, I think, what has played out in recent months has, has underscored uh, the foolishness of degrading our military capacity and, and continuing to downsize our military. Uh, I think the world is only becoming a more dangerous place. And uh, Putin, in my view, is not a complicated world leader. Uh, he, he has been very candid uh, that he views the demise of the Soviet Union as the greatest geopolitical disaster of modern times. And in my view, he is consistently pressing to reassemble as much of that former Soviet Union as possible. And his response to weakness is to press and press and press until he finds meaningful resistance. Now, no one, no reasonable person wants to see direct military conflict with Russia. Two massive armies with massive nuclear stockpiles. No one is interested in that. But as we talked about a minute ago, there are a host of steps we can do that provide meaningful resistance that escalate the costs to discourage future aggressiveness. And, and at this time, the idea of, of downgrading our military, you know, we had a couple of Armed Services Committee hearings recently, one in particular Secretary Hagel testified at, that, 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 that I asked questions about, for example, the Pentagon's $7 billion uh, alternative fuel budget. Uh, the Navy spent roughly $160 million on algae fuel. Now, that same expenditure, had they used conventional fuel, would have cost about $40 million. So that means that was roughly $120 million above what it would cost to use conventional fuel. And, and Secretary Hagel agreed in questioning that that expenditure, uh, likewise the Air Force had a, uh, built a wind farm in Alaska uh, and spent several million dollars on that. Unfortunately, it was an area where the wind doesn't blow. Uh, and they discovered that after they built it that the wind farm uh, is, not, is now being dismantled. And, and Secretary Hagel agreed that the, those expenditures could be characterized as, quote, luxuries. And, and what I urged the Secretary then was, well, it seems to me then, in, in an era of scarce resources, it makes sense to start with the luxuries rather than eliminating soldiers and Marines and eliminating our ability to project force and to defend our vital national security. And, and on the NATO question? Uh, you know, on the NATO question, I, there is no doubt NATO right now is, is, is having a crisis in terms of its ability to prevent Russian aggression. Uh, and that is making our allies deeply uncertain of the degree to which the United States will stand with them. Uh, that, I, I think, has an, a, a destabilizing impact on NATO as a whole. It's why I think stepping forward with something like installing the anti-ballistic missile, missile batteries in Eastern Europe would be a positive step in terms of reassuring NATO. I would note also that moving to export LNG would help much of Europe. I, it's not just Ukraine that's dependent on, on Russian energy. And, and if you look at Europe, and for that matter, uh, you see significant portions of Europe that, that have shale deposits, have the ability to, to develop their own natural gas, but their domestic laws have, have banned fracking, and so they're not developing their own resources. And I think freeing Europe from Russia's energy dominance would, would be beneficial for NATO as well.